Hello everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to episode 15 of Building the Boss Board. Collection update time and what the future holds. So, in front of you, you have just about the entire Andy B Boss Board collection. Obviously I've got a, what was it, a DD20 and a DD200 and an MD200 as far as non-classic boss stuff goes. But at the end of November, on November 30th, episode one was released. And as of filming today, this is February 27th. So in about a three month span, this is what I've done. This is what I've collected. It's crazy. It's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited. Let's get into it. So what's missing other than non-classic stomp boxes? Uh, one pedal is missing. My buddy Max is currently borrowing my DD3 digital delay. That's okay. Not a big deal. That was 30 bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. That one was only 20 bucks. That's in one of the deals and steals episodes slash boss board episodes. So, um, and then, uh, as far as I know, I've gotten my hands on a pre-order for one of those new Wazacraft tone benders which totally blows the budget of the boss board idea, which is to spend about $100 or less. Fortunately, we won't see that for a few months, so it's kind of separate from this series. It's a whole other thing. Uh, so I'm just going to lay it all out there. Uh, as far as money that's been spent, uh, as far as fun I've had, if you haven't seen any of the episodes up until this point, it's it's... A lot of rambling like this it's super fun but it's about my journey and finding uh, a lot of deals and some steals in regards to gear and there's a there's a number of other pedals that are not boss related on there so go check those out there's a deals and steals series too of just other uh, cheap decent stuff that I found uh, but we're gonna start at the top right I lied the top left so starting with the combo drive which is one of the most recent acquisitions so the combo drive is something that emulates a Vox style amp that I've been told. Uh, that was $60 with the box that you see above it, no manual. Next to that is a 1982 DM2 delay, analog delay, which is pretty amazing. This was the first uh, super vintage piece I found. I did have to spend more money to get to it. Uh, there's a number of other pedals here that were part of that bundle as well as some other stuff. So a lot of dollars were needed to spend to spend I spent a lot of dollars to obtain it, but when you break it all down, it amounted to about 50 bucks for that pedal, which is a sweet deal. Next to that in the same pile is the Mega Distortion. Uh, the DS1 was, uh, sorry, so 60, 50, 50. This was 25, that was my first Boss pedal, which, you know, is a very classic sounding story, but it was also only about three or four months ago that I really started getting into these. So, uh, the Distortion. The Overdrive Distortion OS 2 was in a bundle of seven for uh, random pedals for 200, so that was 28.57. This one was 43.75. Uh, this is a 1982. Oh, this is I think like a 1986. This is made in Japan. Uh, this is a 1982. This was 50 bucks. This is a modern one. Had this box with it. This was 30. The CE3 Chorus over there. Uh, it's from 1985, I believe, if not 1986. That was 75 bucks. And then we get into arguably the coolest pedals on the board. Uh, I'm really, really, really excited about these. So if you haven't watched, I believe it's episode 4 and 4.5. Uh, I picked these two up with their boxes for $100 a piece, which initially the investment is big, but... If you're watching this, if you love Boss, if you know what these are, with the boxes, and this one has the manual on the plastic, you know how much they're worth. So this is from July of 1980, uh, which is 10 years before I was born, in July of 90. Uh, and this one is from 1982, I think it's September, not that it matters, but 1982 with this box, which is very clean, there's a manual in it, uh, there's assumptively the original plastic bag, and based on the way the lady, that the lady I purchased these from kept her stuff, I believe that it's original. Uh, this one is from, I think this is 83. Uh, this is something I purchased separate, uh, a little more beat up. This is currently on the boss board. Obviously everything is sitting right in front of us here. Um, but I was really happy to find this one that was a little more beat up. 
And obviously some of these have Velcro. We're not going to go through all that. Watch the other videos if you want to see a little more about the condition and the journey. Um, but anyway, this was also 100. No box, no manual. But this is what's on the board now, so I still get that cool sound. Classic vibe, and it's nice and broken in, if you will. Of course, Ensemble was 43.75. Oh, so that was 100 as well. This was 43.75. Uh, I believe this is a modern one. I've been told that this one has an analog and a digital version. I don't believe this is the modern digital version. I don't know. TR2 is 50. The Super Neat Phasers from, I believe, September or so of 1985. This was 50. Still got to replace the pot on that one. Uh, acoustic Simulator was 28.57. This is probably one of the ones that I'm going to be getting rid of. It's cool. I have acoustic guitars. Um... If I really want an acoustic vibe, and if I'm actually touring, if I ever get to a point where any of this matters, I'll just bring an acoustic guitar, probably. Uh, next, that is the Supercore CH1. That was 50. Uh, Harmonist PS6. This one was 50. These A big chunk of these all came from the same pile. That's episode 3. Uh, so, 50, 50, 50. Uh, the Flanger, I traded away a wah pedal that I got for 50 as part of that big episode 3 bundle. Uh, I traded it for this, so 50. Uh, the Super Active was 43.75. The Heavy Metal is one of my most recent acquisitions. This came from Iowa. This was 100, plus a little shipping. Uh, and this is, I don't know what year this is, because it is made in Taiwan, but it's got an old serial number that equates to a Japanese number. So I'm going to guess it's somewhere between 80 and uh, 88 and 90, but I do not know. Uh, Metal Zone was 30, which has a box. RV6 Reverb was 80. The ML2, can you still see these down here? Yes, you can. The ML2 Metal Core came with a box that was 40. I think this one has the manual and all that. Uh, this is actually one of the most intriguing. This is an NF1 Noise Gate, which is the predecessor to the noise suppressor. This one also has the box with it and a manual and then plastic and i just can't believe that a pedal from 1986 could look so clean there's more wear on the box than there is the pedal um and this these two and uh the next one here the ge7 so this is i think 86 and this is 85 these are about the same these were 70 plus a little shipping and these have boxes um no manual, this one has the manual, and these are just stunning. These came from the same gal who sold me these, again, just pristine stuff. So 70-70. Uh, this one was 50, it was part of the episode 3 pile. 43.75 for this one. This fuzz, this FZ5, is the only pedal, and this is the most recent one, I got it yesterday on February 26th. This is the only pedal that came from eBay out of this entire collection. Everything you see here, including the DD3 that's not here, except for the FZ5, came from Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. This uh, shipped, I think the price was 60 plus shipping was 10 and uh, taxes were a little under 5, so about 75 out, out the door for this one. But we're talking about initial cost. A couple of these things had to be shipped. There was tax on this one, this one, because there was a few that were actually on like the digital like buying platform for Facebook. But without tax and without shipping, this was 60 from eBay. This was 100, which is a pretty good price for a DD8. Uh, new there about 160, which is kind of the going rate for a fair amount of new boss pedals. Um, but it's the least expensive I found, uh, which is great. And then last but not least, uh, the second boss pedal I ever got was the TU3 Tuner with the box up there. That was 50 bucks. So in episode one, it starts with these two. Hey, a tuner and an overdrive, which is a really cool and I think appropriate way to start. So episode 15, there are 32 pedals here. How much does that equate to? So with the... With the DD3 for an extra 20 bucks, that's not here. Uh, and I guess I did, I did, I was able to nab another CH1 for about 30 bucks that I sold to my buddy, uh, for about the same price. Uh, so out the door without any shipping, driving some of these pedals, I had to drive a decent way to go get, uh, adds up to $1,841.96. If you round that up with some gas, with some tax, with some shipping, 
it's probably not quite accurate, but I'd say about $2,000 spent. But uh, 1841 and 96 cents divided by 32 petals, I guess 33 petals is about $56, or it looks like $57, $56.94, if you take, yeah. And if you take 2,000, if you just round this up, divided by 32, again, forget the DD3 for the moment, you're looking at 62.50, which for some of these petals, it's not a stellar deal. I know that like these new and these new are about 60, so that's overpaying. But if you think $62.50 for each of these, for that, for that, holy crap. Like, two grand is a lot of money. And these is a lot of petals. <laughs> and my wife, future wife, will probably kill me one day. But I've had an absolute blast. The journey's not technically over. But things have slowed down. I've nabbed so many deals. I've spent a lot of money. Remember, this is not sponsored by anyone but my wallet and my own income. Uh, but it has been an absolute blast. If you want to hear sounds of these, go check out the other episodes. I'd love likes, comments, subscriptions. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's see. I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 of 32 are made in Japan, which is pretty cool. Uh, current chain of the boss board, tuner, what do we got? SD1, DS1, FC5, uh, the HM2 is on there for fun right now, CE2, the Harmonist, Flanger, the Tremolo, the DM2, the RV6 Reverb, and then on the end I have the digital delay because it doubles as a looper if need be, which is pretty cool. So that's the current chain. The idea with this collection was to have fun, learn some stuff. Definitely me learning some stuff. Hopefully I taught you a couple things along the way in my rambling. Um, yeah, it has been super fun. Now, uh, part of the reason I'm filming this episode right after episode 14 is I'm going to go to a shop today in Minnesota and think about trading in a couple of these. Uh, fortunately, these are sticking around for now. Um, I think that those are petals that one, are obviously very special, and two, I think are, I think it's worth the time to wait to find the right buyer who will pay what they're likely worth. Obviously, you know, it's different for everybody. It's not always, you know, you can't always have a $500 bill, but to some, they could be worth a lot of money. But some of the more modern stuff, like the acoustic simulator, I spent twenty eight fifty seven on it. If I get twenty five or thirty bucks for it in like a trade in, I'd be happy. Uh, that one, I'll probably hold on to this and make another boss board with it. Uh, maybe the mega distortion. There's a few here that are really cool, but they just serve me no purpose. Extra, you know, extra equalizer, bass equalizer, cool to have. Um, what we talked about there was that. There are different frequencies, but it still affects the guitar as much as it would probably affect the bass. But I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for coming on this journey for me, or with for me, with me. Uh, thank you for watching, likes, comments, subscriptions. Uh, this is Building the Boss Board, episode 15. So where do we go from here? Uh, we're sitting, we have 32 here. Got a 33rd in the ether. Maybe it'll show up one day at the Tone Bender, and I've got a DD3 that a buddy is borrowing. That's a lot of pedals, and that doesn't include the money that's been spent on other pedals uh, during this time. A lot of which, or most of which, should be in other episodes in my, on my channel. Please go check them out. But from here, I think that I'm not going to have any more scheduled videos. Uh, <laughs> so much money spent, so much gone over. I think what I'm going to do eventually is just do some simple demos with minimal talking uh, on each pedal that I still have and just show them off that way. But when things come around, if more deals show up, I'm always looking for more deals, more steals, things like that. Um, I'll be looking for them. And if, you know, more relevant stuff like deals on especially the MIJ kind of stuff come up, I'm most definitely going to share them with you. So 
Thank you for 15 great episodes. This has been a blast. My name is Andy. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, I tried to get the angle about right, but it's not quite the same. So I did go to Eclipse Music in St. Paul, Minnesota. It is super amazing if you're from the area. Uh, the owner, John, is a super excellent guy. Great to talk to, very knowledgeable. And I did trade in a boss pedal and the Behringer Harmonizer Pitch Shifter from a couple episodes ago. And I put it towards a pedal that is now here. Uh, can you see what disappeared and what came in? Feel free to pause it. So fortunately, color scheme wise, it was pretty easy. Uh, what was sitting right here was the AC2 acoustic simulator. And actually, this was sitting here, but to f make the rainbow pretty again, uh, I shifted the super phaser over and I put in the phaser PH1R. That is what I picked up today. It was $110, which technically breaks the boss board rules, but... Uh, the two pedals that I traded in, I got for $28.57, which is just under $60, but I sold them or traded them in for $72. So, technically this is about $100, so I'm going to call that good. Uh, this is a silver screw, which is cool. It's rusted. It's old. It actually, I think, is in pretty darn good shape. It was the most beat up of the three that he had. And he had it for 110, which I think is very fair. Uh, it sounds really cool. And uh, batch date on that, I think put it as March of 81, which is pretty cool. So I'm excited to own a second silver screw pedal. So anyway, just wanted to give that quick latest update because go figure, it's always changing. We'll put this in a demo at some point. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Ah, I missed one. This was in a box because there's a uh, slight issue with the with the switch, so it kind of goes ah uh, ah, uh, it kind of cuts out as it's being turned off and on. So RV3, that's the last pedal I missed. Remember the DD3 also wasn't present in the big wide shot, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, that's the last one. Thanks. Have a great day.